All right, uh, I wanted to do a hopefully quick video on the new bookings connector for Power Automate uh, or the Power Platform, really. Um, those of you that are familiar with bookings probably know how useful it can be for scheduling appointments, etc. Uh, but until recently, if you wanted to automate anything, so have any kind of uh, like a maybe a, a log of bookings that were made. Uh, you didn't have that option in Power Automate, so there's no way to have a flow run when a new booking was created or or changed or deleted. Um, so now that we have an official connector, we can do those kind of things. Now, when the connector first came out, I think it was probably about two or three months ago, I noticed that uh, it was listed as a premium connector, which means that it would only be available to folks with uh, kind of the power, uh, the, the per app or per flow license in Power Automate or just a higher level of Power Automate license. Um, now that it is standard, it's, it basically means that it's available to anyone who has, well, not to anyone, but to more people. Um, I'd say most of the people that I talk to have what's called the seeded Power Automate license, which is part of a Microsoft uh, Enterprise license, so an A3, A5, E3, E5 license that you would get as part of an enterprise organization or an academic institution, etc., that has the standard Microsoft licensing. Um, so we still have, or we now have access to this Bookings connector. Now, while it is standard, it's still flagged as preview uh, so that means like anything else in preview it's not the final version not necessarily the final version so what it does what it can do and the licensing for it could change between now and whenever it is out of preview so just be aware that while we can do these things now as of August mid-August of 2022 um, if you're watching this video a year or more later, then things could be different. Uh, I'm also going to link to the documentation for the connector in the description of the video, but actually let's jump over and take a look at that documentation can, uh, directly. So I'm going to my Power Automate homepage, so make.powerautomate.com. I'm going to go to connectors and search for bookings. And there is Microsoft Booking. So when we open this up, um, we see there's a link to the documentation. I'm one of those nerds that loves reading the documentation because it actually contains a lot of useful information. Uh, sometimes it's it's the last place people look, but if you read it ahead of time, it can save you some headaches, like you know, wondering if it, if a connector has an action to do this. Most of the documentation pages, the connector references have a specific list of actions and, and triggers that are available. So get comfortable reading these documentation pages. Uh, so there's some basics here. I'm not going to go through all the details because most of it is pretty intuitive as you go through and start building a flow. Uh, we are going to come back later and take a look at this, talk about some of the known issues and limitations and some troubleshooting stuff around it. Uh, but going back here and actually jumping up back over to our PowerPoint, um, there are basically three triggers that are available as part of this connector. Um, now what's unusual is there are no actions. So the tr three triggers are when a booking is created, when a booking is updated, and when a booking is canceled. So those are kind of the three major events that could occur in the life cycle of a booking's appointment. It gets created, maybe it gets updated, um, when you know the the attendee accepts the meeting invite etc uh, so there might be changes to it and then it might be canceled so this is three things that could happen um, so makes sense that those would be the three triggers now when we actually go in and build a flow using this uh, using one of those triggers we'll see you know what we get out of that uh, because I'll be honest in, in a lot of cases most connectors have both triggers and actions so the trigger is what starts the flow and then there are actions that give us additional functionality so just using Microsoft Forms as an example there's one trigger in that connector which is when a form is submitted and then there's another trigger which is get response detail or I'm sorry another action 
which is get response details because the trigger basically just says hey this form someone submitted a response to this form and then in your flow you need to use the get response details to get the information that was submitted now I guess because bookings is a little more encapsulated so the, you don't need those additional actions to get the details of the booking that is triggering this event or triggering the, the flow um, but the downside is that it also means we can't programmatically update the booking event or booking appointment so if you wanted to you know let's say ha when a booking is created have it locate a previous booking from the same customer and update it you can't do that because essentially there's no way to modify or or create a new booking from within the flow itself so it's kind of a minor thing um, but let's take a look I'm gonna go and create a uh, actually go to the create page and we'll select automated flow and I'll just say new booking created and we'll search again for bookings and there are three triggers so when appointment is created when updated and when canceled um, all right so let's create a new flow here now in order to use this I do need to sign in to connect to, to create the connection to the connector I know it sounds redundant but that's what we have to do so I'm gonna sign in with my regular 0365 user account and this happens to be my development tenant but again in, in a normal M365 tenant should work exactly the same way we'll just wait for that to create the connection and there we go now this requires an input which is the bookings business SMTP address or the email address of the mailbox that the calendar is connected to uh, that's not the easiest thing to find uh, basically I'm going to go over to bookings in the same tenant as the same user and this is the I have this personal counseling booking calendar and that's the one that I want to automate a the the action of or the, the flow so I'm going to go into this particular booking uh, calendar and to get the email address I need to go to the booking page tab and there is the link that I would send folks so if you wanted people to be able to sign up for this uh, to, to book an appointment this is the link that you would publish on your website or put in your email signature or whatever uh, that's what you would share now if you look at that closely you'll see that somewhere in there is something that looks like an email address uh, so I'm going to click copy that's going to copy that to our clipboard and then go back to my flow and paste that in and then I'm just going to remove the things that are not part of the email address. So slash bookings at the end is not part of the email. And then the preface, so outlook.office.365.com slash OA slash calendar, get rid of all that. So you're, what you're left with is just the email address or the SMTP address of that mailbox. So that is that. Um, now, when I want to, when I'm looking at an action in Power Automate, um, I like to know what kind of output that action or that trigger is giving me and the easiest way I found to do that uh, the cleanest way is to use a good old compose step uh, so add a compose action and if I click in the inputs here we can look at uh, all of the dynamic content coming out of that trigger which is a lot of stuff so there's some additional info some customer email I'm not gonna read all these there's a ton here uh, but what I do want to look for and find is body because that's gonna give us sort of a synopsis that's gonna be all of that other stuff in one kind of chunk so that we can then dissect it and take a look at what we get so I'm gonna just select that I'm gonna hit save and now uh, so that I can actually see how that booking works or, or create a booking appointment in there I'm going to go over to another user account here so I'm in Robert's user account I'm going to again paste that address in the full address and go to the booking page 
So hey, I'm signing in as Robert, and I want to book a virtual consultation, absolutely, um, on the 29th at 10 a.m. That'll work for me. Now down here, I will say Robert Hogan, and our Hogan, there we can paste that in. All right. And then I just click book. So now booking is created. Well, it's working on it. Should just take a moment or two. Okay, there we go. So now we have our booking confirmed. If I want to be sure that I got that that is there, I can check my Outlook mailbox for this account. Um, may take a moment or two for it to there we go personal counseling there's the ICS I can add this to my calendar etc um, and this is kind of what the normal booking notification email looks like so that's all good and if we go back here and take a look at the fin you know, that, that flow run uh, now we didn't do anything special here all we did was say when this is created give me the data that's coming in there just so we can take a look at it uh, so in the case of a composed action the inputs are going to be the same as the output so it doesn't matter which of these you click I'll select show raw inputs but here's all the data that we're getting in that uh, trigger uh, the output of the trigger so we have the uh, there was no additional info added the customer email ID name phone time zone etc um, kind of all of the relevant details so at this point you would need to think about what it is you want to do with this data so my first kind of the first use case I think of with this type of trigger is being able to have a separate log of booking activities so sometimes you know bookings has gotten better over the time that i've used it but i do know early on there were problems where appointments would mysteriously disappear and there was really no auditing mechanism there was no way to go to go back and and see what happened to an appointment when it's gone from the calendar it's just gone uh, so this would give you sort of a safety net where if you are you know automatically you know you have these flows that are automatically going to record when a booking is created into let's say a SharePoint list or a Microsoft list or an Excel file whatever it might be um, and then when it's updated when it's deleted it's, or when it's canceled so you, you kinda have that that you're building your own audit trail for your bookings calendar uh, so you would kind of be able to go through here I wouldn't recommend logging every single one of these columns you could if you really wanted to uh, but I would say at least get the relevant information things like the customer email the uh, maybe their ID probably their name um, the end time of the meeting the start time of the meeting which is curious well because these are in alphabetical order uh, but basically the relevant details the important things to to know about this um, like the service name maybe you need that if you have multiple services uh, you probably don't need the service notes. You probably want the staff members that are assigned to it, etc. So think about, look at what you're getting here, figure out what it is you want to log, and then you can build a flow to to log those things or record those things. Again, I your your data source is your choice. I personally would use a SharePoint list or a Microsoft list, but that's just because that's the one I'm most comfortable with. But use whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but that gives us an idea of what we're getting out of the out of the connector and out of that uh, that triggering action. So those are three triggers. That's how we build the flow um, to trigger when one of those things happen. Let's talk a little bit about the known limitations. So right now there are kind of two biggies and really only two that Microsoft lists. The first is that only people who are administrators uh, and they just use the term admin effective I jump over to the documentation 
and go to known issues they say only admins can create flows using appointment triggers um, that can be confusing because the term admin is kind of lost its meaning in the Microsoft 365 world because there are all different types of admins for different things what they mean here are admins of that mailbox or that calendar so in a bookings calendar you have people who could be if you go to your staff you've got people who are administrators uh, they could be something else so I can make you know Peter could be an administrator or a scheduler or a viewer what this limitation means is that the person needs to be an administrator in order for them to create a flow connected to that calendar um, just be aware of that uh, the other limitation is you can only have five flows connected to a particular bookings mailbox so you know if you basically if you have five already and you try to create another connect to the same one you'll get a message saying hey it can't be created um, I don't think that's really a problem because since there are only three different types of three triggers available I don't see why you would need more than three flows for a particular mailbox unless there are two people who want to do different things when a new appointment is created um, they would just have to kind of cooperate and build all of the things they want to do into one particular you know one uh, flow uh, because the reality is that yes you can only use you can only trigger the flow in those three conditions um, and if you want different things to happen you can build those different things into one flow as parallel branches or just as a sequence so a single flow can do a lot of different things so you might just need to cooperate with one another and build the you know a single flow to do everything that all the administrators of the mailbox want to happen uh, so that is it for this I, again I'll put the link to the the documentation in the description below hopefully this was useful to you and it's something that uh, you might want to take a look at uh, and get comfortable with if you use bookings this could open up a lot of doors for you so thank you and have a great day